Hello and welcome to Mr. Dave's Science Corner. Today I am going to teach my science using a little bit of math and some art. So, this morning is so beautiful and I have such a beautiful background here. I decided to take a walk. So, what I did was I put my art skills together by using one of my friends, Roy G. Biv. Now, he's not real, but Roy G. Biv stands for all the important colors that we use in art to color with, to paint with, to draw with. So, what I did was I thought, let's have a lesson on the colors in nature. So I took a walk around my neighborhood, one block square, that's one block, and then turn right or left, go another block, turn right or left again, and you go all the way around so you get four squares or four blocks in one, so it's a one square block. Now, as I walked around, I started to think about where could I find some colors? So Roy G. Biv is my friend, imaginary friend, that helps me do this. First, you had the red. Well, I found some beautiful red holly berries that were on a tree. These beautiful red holly berries are red, and we can use that as the red for my lesson. Next, I thought orange. Well, I saw a tulip in my neighbor's yard that was a beautiful orange, but I thought I don't want to pull it just for this lesson. So I didn't do that, but a tulip is a, a great looking flower on top of a plant, green plant, but I found another one in a yard that I'm not even sure about. I'm going to have to identify this later. This is an orange flower that I found on a tree a couple houses down from me. Then you had the R and the O, and then you have Y. Well, the Y stands for yellow. The daffodils that we did a couple days ago on my lesson, that is definitely yellow. And then I found this. This might be new to some of you. This is called a forsythia. This forsythia is all yellow now, but it can start to change into the green. Right here you can see that these turn into green leaves eventually. But these are yellow flowers on the plant at this point. And then I found another one that a lot of people don't like. Um, it's not nice in their yard, and that's called the dandelion. The dandelion has all of these yellow color, like the color is yellow, and it's white at the end when they have seeds that they're going to disperse. But right now they're all beautiful yellow flowers. And then I'm thinking, okay, that's Roy, R-O-Y, but then his middle initial, G, I found green. And this is right here in my backyard, the green pine needles. We talked about these a few days ago too. The green pine needles is an evergreen, never turns or drops their leaves, and it's in the conifer family or the conifer group. So that's an evergreen pine tree for the green. Then we get a little bit a little bit harder. It's Biv, B-I-V. Well the blue I thought right now up behind me is blue sky. So I could use the blue, the color blue for my blue sky. And then we have I, an indigo. Well, indigo is very different to what I've learned over the years because indigo to me is a color you don't use all the time. But indigo is like a deep bluish purple. There's an indigo bunting bird that's really a cool bird over at Burke's Nature. But at this point, I haven't been over there to find a bird that I could take a picture of and show you. So what I did was I thought the indigo color would be something like this. This is a periwinkle. It's called periwinkle. And it's a really great color to show you because this periwinkle is found all over different like grass. And it's like grass itself, but it's coming up now and it blossoms into these really great looking indigo type color flowers. And then we have the last color, which is violet. And violet, I think of when I think about this right here. This is a violet type color, like light pinkish purple. And this is an azalea. Azalea is another flowering plant. It's in usually a bush form that's not real tall. 
and they have really pretty colors here. And you can see that inside is the parts of the flower that we talked about a little bit a few lessons ago. It's the stamen and the pistils, the male and female flower parts. And then I found one more that I thought was really cool. And this is, again, under violet. This is part of a magnolia tree. These magnolia trees are all over the place blooming in big flowers right now. And the big flowers are hanging on the tree and they drop. And then the leaves come out and all you see is these green leaves. So a lot of these are plants and flowering plants that come out in the early spring, have their time here, and then suddenly they just go into these green plants and green leaves. So now your your job is this. You're going to go out and you're going to use Roy G. Bibb to help, help you. You're going to find the colors of Roy G. Bibb, the red, the orange, the yellow. The middle initial is the G, green, and then Bibb, the blue, indigo, and violet. When you do this, make sure you go out with a parent. Make sure that you are following all the rules of crossing roads if you have to cross a road and make sure that you find the colors and then I want you to get back online on the web or on Facebook where we post these videos and share with me what you found as your Roy G. Biv colors. So we learned a little bit about art this morning with the colors and the color wheel, primary colors, and we also did a little tiny bit of math thinking of that one square block that you're going to take. One block, turn right, go another block, turn right, Go another block and turn another right and come back home. Or do that going to the left. Whatever way you think you will see more plants and more trees and blossoms. So again, think of safety, staying healthy, and really enjoy the nature this morning. It's beautiful. And you can go out and you can check all the different colors of nature using some math and science and art skills. Have fun. And see you next time on Mr. Dave's Science Corner.